All right, we're trying this again. Power outage put me behind schedule, you guys. But it's back now. It was a short outage, but I went around and unplugged all the all the thingies in all the places. And I'm gonna have to say no to whatever this music is. All right, so last we left off, I was digging through all the garbage I got at um, garbage store, uh, Harbor Freight, had a big sale, got a bunch of random garbage. These things are great for holding wires like this in place. I had these like velcro strip things but um taking them on and off was a annoying two-handed affair and being able to just grab it with one hand seems awfully nice anyway it was like a dollar for all these so how could i not they're so they're so colorful look how colorful that is <sighs> magnets I got these so that I could pin my curtain back against the metal cabinet I had powerful magnets with hooks and managed to disappear them somehow these have nice handles Not a ruler, it was a buck. Um, every once in a while I need a thin sheet of metal. May end up getting cut up, repurposed, who knows? It's just nice to have around. This is actually a pretty cool texture. I wonder... I might end up using that for something. I got these because, ouch, there are, there's steel brass, which is slightly softer, and nylon. And so I think that when I'm sanding slash carving foam, I'm trying to find some way to just kind of generally soften edges on a sculpted surface. Um, and these wire brushes are just way too intense, but I thought maybe the nylon brush would work. I don't know. That'll require some experimentation. We will get to you. This stuff goes in sanding. Okay. Thought this could be useful for some kind of foam carving as well. Plus it just looks wicked cool. Um, 
epoxy. You can never have too much of that. Epoxy putty. Also, never can have too much of. I got this rasp because I was trying to sand like in a little thing like that. But uh, the other rasp I have is a um, it's like square, so I couldn't get that little kind of corner. Now this whole set of miscellaneous doodads, and they're like a couple bucks each, and um, you can see they're just full of different kinds of rings and circles. Uh, which come in handy for all manner of sculptural details. Yeah, I'm sure I'll end up using these in a variety of ways on um, dioramas or figures or something. nuts and bolts. Seems like I always have them laying around somewhere, but whenever I need them, I can't find them. So again, a couple dollars and I'll just have this nice repository that, assuming I can find this box, I'll have nuts and bolts when I need them. And of course, just like super aggressive rasps, which I think um, may come in handy when I'm, you know, I've got a big mountain or rock face or something and I just need to like blast away corners or edges. And then I also got all this glue for glow, uh, gluing foam. I got this triangle, which I cut the tip off of because I needed to fit my Proxon wire cutter, which has a fairly low clearance. So it had to be able to fit under like that. When, you, when you're setting this wire up, um, you need to make sure that it's uh, straight up and down at every angle. So, <laughs> and this was like a piece of guard, it was like a dollar, right? But um, the bottom actually wasn't even, so it had a little bit of a shake on it. So I took it to the belt sander and hopefully got it flattened as well as it needs to be. I used this metal one to make sure that it's true as well as as well as I possibly could. Okay, let's talk about my little invention that I've been building. This bizarre thing, in theory. Uh, 
should help me make little cylinders out of foam so that I can do like um, uh, pillars and stuff like that in foam. Now, one thing I hadn't considered is foam would then okay so so most most circle cutters for these it's just a piece of wood with a little with a little like quarter inch spike sticking out and you stick the thing on the spike and just rotate it by the wire and that melts it right uh, the one thing that I thought would be difficult is if you have a tall ish piece and you're and, and you want it to be thin because then you're gonna get kind of wobble as you go and that's why I thought having a two-sided clamp to hold it perfectly in place would be more ideal however it's, I'm just now seeing as I as I set it up that um, if, the if the top doesn't touch it it's not accomplishing that this bottom does not need to be that long. Hardly needs to be very long at all. I'm also not sure how important it is that it be directly in the center. I mean, the center will be whatever it becomes, but yeah, hmm. And try it like this real quick just to see what happens and I, I cut a wooden box the bottom off of it just so I'd have this nice square frame and attach these these little guys um, so in theory this edge should be true and if I if I have it at uh, one of these lines it should do its job just fine. So the downside to having a spike on this thing is that this is not flush with this surface, meaning I can't hold it down, right? If you hold it down, it has a lot of wobble there. Uh, not ideal. So. This device looks like it's only going to work with taller pieces. So let's make a taller piece, shall we? Because of the length of this, uh, I'm assuming that I'm not going to have a true line directly going through the center. So, if it was shorter, it wouldn't be as big a problem, but then I would always have to make sure that this thing is exactly this height, which maybe that's fine? I don't know. Let's see what happens. I 
We need to turn the heat up quite a bit since it's going. that divot there because I had it I had it so hot if I had it less hot I could have gone slower hey Kenzo good evening um, but yeah that seems like a good color I don't know how truly okay, so I'm getting I'm seeing a little gap between the oh, you can see it right there the triangle and the rod when I hold it face down although I wonder yeah when you rotate it this way it's the opposite so it is definitely a little bit cockeyed um, however if I just run it through that would that flat hmm it's gonna be a good percentage way to do that well I'm gonna try this again I'm gonna go ahead and cut this down considerably and just say hey if you're gonna use this you're gonna have to make it up you know a five inch rod what is, this? is this actually five inches pretty much exactly yeah Finding the true center, does it? I feel like it shouldn't actually matter if it's in the true center because it, the true center is wherever you poke it. That's going to be the center. Um, but maybe having, you know what? If this piece here had a disc that it fit on like this, right? Oh, look at this. Look at this. If it was just this, um, well, it can't, can't be because the wire needs to go through it. So the way the, the way the other jigs I've seen do it is, Bear shaped like imagine this is the this is the surface of the device and here's your little here's where the, the white hot wire is it's like a board that's shaped like this it's kind of like a big H but then your disc spins and it's got contact with this board all the way around like that And so I, I guess I could, if I used a sheet of something that was the same thickness as this, which I'm sure I've got to have. I mean, I see lots of things that are about that thickness. I would like to have something that uh, is fairly easy to cut as well. Ooh, maybe this lid. Hi, 76. Welcome, welcome. No, this is too thick. Mm. I just ordered super scissors that are supposed to cut through things really well. But I do not have them yet. So I feel like this is the right thickness. Let's 
So I would need to cut this shape out of it, as well as circle. Okay. Let's see. How would this work? Sadly, this board is warped as well. I'm gonna keep looking for a better. This part of it is not warped. And while I'm up, I'm going to sand this down so it's got a really flush uh, edge there. You can see the, uh, the epoxy sticks out, which makes it tilted just a tiny bit. Surely I have more regular pins somewhere, but it ran away from me. Kinzo got a new phone again, huh? Another one kept freezing, got sick of it. Nice. It's always nice to have a new phone. to fit into and then circle from this middle point which I presume is about here hmm. let's say this is probably big enough Even that does not fit through there. Won't fit through. Okay, if I really press it hard, it does. out on my jigsaw real quick one moment uh, yeah yeah more or less bricks and pillars
know what's interesting when you cut this stuff it uh, smells like those high quality collectible figurines like McFarlane toys and whatever they make nowadays Now this mat is supposed to be self-healing, so we'll see if it's like a, a vampire or like Deadpool. It'll grow the rest of the mat back after cutting it into pieces like this. Smells like elderberries. Yes, that is well. Just like my mother. Or is it my father that smells like it? I think my father smells like elderberries. My mother was a hamster. That's how it goes. If you follow me on Facebook, you know how much I love it when people quote Monty Python. And you guys, I thought I was going to pull an all-nighter, but um, I actually started drifting off. I was editing Scarred King Book 2, and uh, yeah, I was, I was getting tired, actually, which I did not think would happen since I slept for literally 16 hours the night before last. But I ended up crashing for a couple hours, so I'm a little, a little wonky feeling right now. So, I realized once I cut this groove all the way through, I didn't actually need to cut the groove all the way through. I could have left a little a little space about there um, because it still is not quite thick enough. Um, is it because this material is not as thick as that metal or it's because this still needs to be ground down a bit. Either way, uh, I'm going to need a bed to keep all these parts together. I made my bed, now I've got to lay in it. Or I laid in my bed, and now I've got to make it.
Oh, you can see. If I cut around this piece, I won't. That'll help with the depth issue. Hey, Letha. Molasses is like a little kid. He gets in trouble for buggy and breve, so then he runs away and sits down and stares at her. Now he gets in trouble for that, too. Oh, my. So much trouble over there. Trouble, trouble, trouble. It's like, uh, it sounds like high school politics to me, but with cats. It's this bridge under here that's really doing the connecting work, so I don't, don't need to worry about this area. Grind that down real quick. Just a bit more. This new stuff I saw, uh, just got claims to be instant set, i.e. 90 seconds, which compared to 5 minutes or 20 minutes or hour, like some of them are, is close to instant. Hi Sigrid. little clamps. Work perfect. The theme of today's stream is using a bunch of new stuff. Hmm, I wonder if 90 seconds might actually be too fast if I need to kind of reposition this at all. But I don't know that I would need to reposition at all. One thing I definitely need to do. Here's my scrap piece of black stuff. Here it is. I need to make sure it's not sitting on my work surface that I want to keep nice. Let's 
think that there's a good way to keep this in place while it dries. Let's see. So if I put code on, I put epoxy around here, wash it down there, put these on. And can't really clamp that without messing it up, so probably just an even kind of weight on it is what I want to do. Okay. Okay, I've got a strategy. That's important when you got ha uh, fast drying stuff is go through the process in your head before you start using it. Also, I um, always have a plastic bag for epoxy when you're done. Because these little lids, they do not actually stay on very well. And also, I apologize, most of my strategy planning was off camera. even amount out of these sides is proving a little difficult. is truly terrible. Oh, there we go. Okay. Let's bag. Got a cute little stir stick here that came with it. Might as well use it. Probably close to a minute now.
Once I ground down the um, bottom of this, the back of the pin was sticking out of the epoxy, so kind of unseated it. Since I put uh, glue over there, I don't really want to set my tape on there. Since it's supposed to only be 90 seconds, I can probably just hold it in place for a bit. Did your power come back on, Aliza? Mine was only out for about 15 or 20 minutes, but I didn't want to start streaming again. I, I was streaming last night at 2.30, and uh, power went out, and I was having audio difficulties anyway, I'm trying to get my um, what is it called, my little earpiece microphone thing to work and it was just sounding distorted and awful apparently, I couldn't hear it I was being informed of that and, uh, and the power went out and it was just like I didn't want to risk having all my computers and stuff on it went out twice just for a couple minutes each time, but yeah, I wasn't going to risk it, so I unplugged all the expensive electronics in the ho house and just used my tablet to work on the book for a couple hours and then got sleepy, miraculously. Okay, it's definitely been way more than 90 seconds and this stuff is not completely set. Let's see if I missed a spot. Okay, yeah. Product sets in 90 seconds. Item can be handled in 30 minutes. Full care 24 hours. But what is the point of 90 seconds if it's not actually going to be fully strong for half an hour? Alright, well, good thing I have 20 other things to work on in the meantime. Today is truly a miscellaneous stream. I labeled that correctly. on next sketches or my strange three tubed device vote now while you're voting I'm going to uh, read off latest subs okay on the twitch we've got sculpt to sculpt to uh, YouTube Remus David Schwan Camille Peter Schlosser, Blah and an Annoidim, hmm? uh, Jesse Berrien. On Twitch we've got Sheik Uni, Monstar HBR, and Holtz, Holtz Transistor. On YouTube we've got Tatu Ulanketu, uh, William Hehir, The Bad Bone 23. Cody English, Jonah Jones, on Twitch, uh, Freeze Hedge, Free, Frizz Hedge, uh, back on YouTube, we've got uh, Campos Marco 27, uh, Kari Colbinson, 
Lenny Mude? Uh, um, hmm, let's see. Architechnique. Architechnique Studio. Cool. Max Kimmich. Sean Kelly. Tony Pickup. Eric Dacon. Adam Williams. Vlad Esparso. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for joining me. All right. Are the votes in? Have all 83 million of you voted yet? Let's see. And the vote is in. No one cares. So I'm going to do sketches because it's right next to me. Letha says power was out for three hours, but went to bed shortly after it went out anyway. That's pretty good timing. I sat on my slidey bench outside in the dark and the wind for a bit too. It was nice. That's cool. Uh, Van Morda voted that Morda was the best box. All right, fair. Okay, so in the last stream, well, the last one was cut short, but in the last stream where I was ZBrushing, I sculpted these guys in ZBrush, printed them out, and now I'm going to transfer them to my sketchbook for the pencil treatment. This is not how I do most of the art, only the ones where it runs into trouble. Decide how I want to orient these. They're gonna go like so. It's kind of cramped. Uh, easy to hold it and draw like this, or easier like this. Do this way. Okay, so it's a pretty simple technique. I used to do this with uh, carbon paper. I just put a sheet of carbon paper on the back, put it on and draw through it. The problem is the carbon does not erase the same way that um, pencil does. So instead I make my own carbon paper by doing this. It takes a little longer obviously. But the results are much better and easier to manage. It's been so long since I've used traditional pencil, I do not even remember where my pencil sharpener is. So once I run out of edge on this, I'm doomed. I'll never be able to do this technique again. Painter's tape. sense to put a big line right where I need to do a hairline.
I like how the face is turned out. Good. Good, good. producing every little line especially like this kind of stuff was clearly just like I didn't spend a lot of time on the hair because I was going to be drawing over it anyway but man getting the landmarks like where these ears land where highlights on them end up so helpful All right, Sigrid, good night. Ben Mortis says, just used clip feature. Should be published soon. It's stuck at 100%. Uh, Sigrid says, not hope to, but hope you have. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, oh, okay, I missed some stuff do that with all kind of pictures and pretend I can draw. Yep, you could totally use this to print it, pretend you're a good drawer, just like me. Are they supposed to be in a scene together or separate? If they're together, his friend's head looks a little too big. The idea is his, head, his friend is uh, closer to the camera, as it were, uh, but also these are going to be uh, superimposed in Photoshop, so it their relative size doesn't quite matter. But yeah, his friend's supposed to kind of have a bigger pumpkin head, and he's supposed to have kind of a slimmer, taller head in comparison. But also, yes, I will probably end up adjusting it in Photoshop. thing I should have done is found a toon shader that would do um, posterizing or I suppose I could do that in Photoshop afterwards as well or just really would call out where the different tone um, levels start and stop because I'm kind of finding myself doing that on my own. You know, it would all get smoothed out in the when I do the pencil rendering afterwards, but I think it would help shortcut this part of the process. Yeah, the faces uh, start looking strange once you start penciling over them. Um, definitely requires a lot of post cleanup work afterwards. It's not a free technique. 
if I was better at rendering, I'll bet I would be able to find a way to um, render the CG models so they more closely emulated my pencil sketches. But at some point I may get proficient enough with 3D modeling and sculpting that I may just kind of switch all the illustrations over to uh, CG and uh, skip the whole pencil rendering thing. I mean, the point is not to have a pencil rendered image. The point is to communicate my vision for Telfar. Pencil rendering just happens to be the technique that I've been using so far because it's fastest, it's portable, I can do it wherever I'm at. Um, and so I have the most time to kind of do that, and so I have a lot of momentum with that. But, you know, and it's the same with uh, all the stories right now being novels. Like, if I was in my perfect world, I'd be spending millions of dollars making the, uh, the Game of Thrones style, um, TV series out of it. Um, but it's much cheaper to make novels for now. turned out huh. what is that eye oh, looks so weirdly cockeyed when it's in this Well, that's pretty much the guidelines that I needed. So I'm good with that. Come to think of it, if I was smarter, I would have made I would have rendered these two heads together in the same scene so the lighting and everything would have matched up since I knew they were going together anyway as a set. had a daughter. That's cool. Oh wait, yes I did. She's in the military, isn't she? Just fooling you. Aren't I a good fooler? Sergeant. Nice. Uh, one thing I want to do, actually, before I untake this, I'm going to mark the edges. Bow mark the edges. So 
So, in case I want to do another pass, I can get the paper back exactly where it came from. get away with erasing my pencil marks off so I still have this page as reference that I can keep in my notebook because obviously I did not reproduce all the shadows and lines exactly right not that this CG model is exactly right but it's got good landmarks. Always work left to right if you're right-handed because uh, otherwise I do a bunch of work up here and then I smudge it with my hand while I'm working down here is just establish the lines in a much firmer, more authorial hand.
actually going to transfer this eye up just a little bit. For whatever reason, it just looks really wrong. Down where it's at. Actually, let me try something. Eyeball this, right? I think I've got an eye for this. Okay. So, okay. Oh, too bad I didn't mark the page here. Hmm. Guess one thing I could do is. Page. Make sure I've got it exactly where I want it. I want it a little bit higher. See what happens when we do this. It says, I'm getting impatient for Audible to approve the audiobook for The Hidden Level. I may need to poke them. I'm pretty sure it's been longer than 10 days. I'm surprised the turnaround is only 10 days. I'm assuming it needs an actual human to confirm that it is actually a file and it's audible audio and fits their format criteria. I doubt they actually have anyone listen to more than a second or two of it, but because the sculpture has the um, the pupil further back and it should be so I may have just I, I probably should have sculpted differently with uh, illustration in mind, with tra well, tracing specifically in mind.
I also did not give it a sufficient bounce light. I thought I did, but most of my illustrations that I do by hand, I use this kind of bounce light technique where the bottom uh, part in shadow has some, it just helps define the places that are in shadow. But here's the original uh, picture that I was just unhappy with that I'm redoing now. Ivan Mahaka subscribed. Welcome, Ivan. This is just wrong. So the cheek pops up. Oh, because I moved the eye up. Move the cheek up. Probably gonna end up distorting this whole thing beyond belief. But always learning as I go. So that's very kind of you not to put quick hangers in your books.
Uh, no, I'm not using charcoal, I'm just using a mechanical pencil and a little rolled up piece of paper for a blender. there be light.
It's always tricky where the light from the nose falls over the lip, but then you also have a bounce light hitting the bottom of the nose. So you have a little, so the bottom part of the nose is actually a little bit brighter than the shadow it's casting. Which seems counterintuitive. Which is probably why I'm bad at pulling it off. Rita says I put a stick in the mouse's cage so now I can reach the so now it can reach the lid and it climbs around on the underside of the wire mesh lid. Drives the cats bonkers. Oh I'll bet. Man, what a lucky mouse to get such a stay of execution like that. Move on to other things. Happy with that progress on the drawing for now. Stash my reference picks. definitely been half an hour, so let's see how our little boxy box is doing. Running around taunting the kids, yeah. Uh, yeah, I have issues with smearing uh, on the sketchbook pages, but when I'm done with a page, I spray it with a fixative, and then uh, it doesn't doesn't smear after that. Okay. So, let's put this in the middle-ish. Now, it should be able to spin freely. Okay. Turn the heat down a little bit. 
Just do it slower. perfectly a straight but it's awfully darn close spot too long. This is a pretty good texture for a log though, isn't it? Uh, okay, so one thing I'm curious about is does the top thing make a difference? So if I don't use it does it turn out the same, worse, or better? The wire is so thin I didn't see it at first and looked like the block was being cut by magic. Uh, no, you don't need gloves. This is, I mean, if you hold your finger on it, it'll burn by just touching it briefly. It's not a problem. So this is my concern on a tall thing, if it's only pinned on the bottom, it just gets all wiggly by the time it gets to the top. Yeah. And here's the thing, since I'm doing ruins with this, no problem with having some of the pieces be weird like that and then have some that are smoother. Get 
stacked up. They have a nice, nice variety to them. I think I'm going to want to and I'm still not sure exactly how to get the bottoms perfectly flush but that is what this time of experimentation is for Wobbly. Very good mathematical reason for why. If this angle is slightly off, could that be what's doing it?
It certainly seems less tapered. sure it's not because that thing is wobbly. makes me wonder if you could just buy extruded styrofoam shapes like this already. it's tapered at all, when I put it flush against this, it's going to naturally do some kind of 
curve. That makes sense. Or not curve, but angle. thing I haven't tried yet is doing a larger piece. Although I guess the, the three inch thickness kind of limits it, doesn't it? Uh, unless I stack them. Okay, what is it? A pressure piece here. And every time you reset it, you gotta make sure the angle is good. So I think at some point I picked it up from this handle, like so, and that ruined it. Or it just was never super centered to begin with, so keep having to give it a chiropractic adjustment. Hey Damon, spend about four hours cleaning the inside of your truck today. Almost feels like new in honor of having paid it off. Nice. Always good to have a paid off vehicle. We had one until just recently. Am I moving this the wrong way? Oh, I am moving it the wrong way. Also, for those who may be interested, awesome games done quick, started, and goes all week. Cool. Bye, Dottie. Thanks for stopping by. Back in business.
together. We could use a needle like a spike. No. But before I do that, see if it works without it. because I don't want the uh, wire to accidentally bump into them. use both my hands here.
<laughs> that stuff's not good to breathe. Okay. Um, let me bang these rocks up real quick. Or bang these pillar pieces up with rocks, rather. Muting you guys for a sec. More stuff I shouldn't breathe. Didn't it work? What? What was I muting then? Oh, interesting. So I've got my headset still going through. Huh. Sorry about that. summoning from getting like three hours of sleep.
this gentle pushing in uh, doesn't work great for stone. But picking parts off certainly does. That fractures like a stone pretty well. column nice and stable with uneven pieces that is my question I could go in and on every piece to average out all the discrepancies well enough, seems like. The ideal thing would be to do kind of a dot of blue as I go on that. I'm gonna try to use a little bit of this new stuff that I just bought.
says, so with all the feedback you've been getting on the Scarred King, how are you feeling about the books? Uh, feeling pretty super about them now. I mean, I always wish I could get more feedback. But, uh, I do feel like my, my core, like, discomfort and unsuredness was addressed by the feedback that we got. this stuff away and last event of the afternoon is going to be my crazy invention which we are about to discover. this box for miscellaneous foam pieces as I experiment.
That's right, we're bringing this bad boy back. So close to finished. Damn How's it going? Oh, goodbye, Demon Raw. Have good food. I believe this says, is the album with the cover you designed out already or coming out later? Uh, comes out March 1st. There are two albums, one called War and one called Peace. And they both release on the same day. Okay, so this is what I'm hoping to achieve. We got this here vape pin. Or I don't know if it's a pin, it's a vape device of some sort, and it leaks. I have learned that it leaks. That's what I've learned about it so far. flavorless base which is just the mist there's no tobacco or wacky tobacco or anything like it and then this is just a flavor of butterscotch so it won't uh, it'll smell nice done this once and it was a couple weeks ago so wish me luck remembering how to do this hold this down oh, okay. Ooh, I don't remember if that's actually how you fill it I'm guessing it is what else on the screw is anything else doesn't look like it all right That's right, it needs to go in that little hole. Okay, so who knows where that just went. So this thing moves back and forth for an unknown reason. Like there's a little slot that opens up and closes. I don't know why. So Kinzo, I filled it in this little hole, but I think it needs to go in this little hole. Because I'm not seeing anything in the little reservoir. does look like this little gap, whatever that is, uh, has the juice in it now. Yeah, okay, so that's where that stuff goes. Uh, 
based on the different sizes, I assume this needs much, much less than the base. that the stuff I poured in the wrong spot isn't going to electrocute me or destroy the pan. ridiculous button presses that I have no idea how you're supposed to remember. I feel like you're supposed to press it five times. Yep. Okay. And then what do you do to start it? Power lock. That's not what I want. Power locked. Well, don't be. Just do what you're supposed to do. That's the overflow. Okay. Wait, are you saying this clear chamber is the overflow, or this little this little gap here is the overflow? Yeah, I don't know if that's supposed to be open or not. Um, power locked. What is that? Why? Just... Why can't things be intuitive? Coil head. Airflow system. Oh. Maybe that needs to be open for air to come through? Devices off. Quickly click fire key five times in two seconds to turn it on. The screen successfully displays smock. Maybe while the device is on, hold fire key to vape. It will be forced to stop working when one vaping is longer than 10 seconds. Release and press again to vape again. Quickly press fire key five times to lock or unlock. Screen unlock status. First click fire key five times to lock your device. To unlock the device, press the fire key and up button simultaneously to choose your desired ramp up option. What does any of this mean? Kenzo says I have mine half open. If you close it, it's too strong. Okay. Uh, so this says power locked, so I'm gonna try one, two, three, four, five. Does that, okay, power unlocked, good. So hold the button and. <coughs> okay, <laughs> I think that's working then. Um, yeah, definitely too much flavor in there. Okay. Kids, don't do not do this at home. Don't do drugs. Okay, so here's my wacky device that has three exits. And the idea is I can have three areas on the sculpture here that the hoses go in the back. So when I breathe the mist, it could fill up the underside here and leak out of the various holes that are on here. There's some on the horn here. There's the nostrils, etc., etc. 
That is my hope. I don't know how hard it's going to be to blow smock through all of these at the same time. This is what we're about to find out, ladies and gentlemen. if any was coming out of my mouth or just these. Let me isolate these ends. By the way, the point of getting smoke to come out of here is for the video. I want to videotape it and make it look super cool. The stuff's coming out in slow motion. I think that'll look pretty rad. Okay, so I'm going to need to... Nice. Add a little bit of seepage around the cups, but the vast majority of it was definitely coming out of the tubes. And it was I didn't have to blow hard at all, so that's great. I'm trying to think what I could do to make this more Ooh, I could, I could try to put this entire thing in my mouth. Oh my god, this is going to be ridiculous. No, that won't work because I have to open my mouth really wide to get it in, at which point all the smoke will come out. Let me try it tilted this way, see if that makes a difference. Yes, I'm very pleased with this. Okay. Uh, so this actually gives me an idea for the other photo shoots because when we were shooting the Colossus, we we're just blowing with our mouths, but then we had to like lean like close into it, blow, and then like back out, take the picture. If we just had a hose we could blow through, we could direct it with our arms where we want it and really, really be precise with it. So that's pretty exciting. Um, okay, so. So, so, so. Let's position these ho, ho, ho. I would want it to come out as close to the tip of the horn as possible. Like one here. Oh, you guys can't see that. There we go. Okay, so like one here, one here, and I'm thinking one like here. So. I have the outline of um, this vaguely drawn on there already. So I guess if I miss a little bit, I can just fill in wherever I miss with, um, with hot glue. Oh man, battery die already? Thank you. 
sometimes when I save stuff, I'm really happy that I did. I won't have to glue these into place. Ideally, oh, I'm actually screwing it. Damon says, if you recover from heart attack so well, you'd think you wouldn't worry about your fat or cholesterol and take as much. I just don't want to look fat or feel fat. My cholesterol is actually amazing. I eat a lot of fat. I just try to avoid carbs. Okay, so middle. I don't actually know which of these gets the most smoke output. I'm just going to guess middle for now and see what happens. So 
tingly. I suppose I could make these less tingly by kind of keeping them taped together until the end where they need to separate. So this just occurred to me. Remember I got all these parts? Remember back 18 hours ago when I started this uh, stream? The hoses can fit into one of these. Right. Okay, so I can hot glue these little doobly doos onto the board and then just thread the tubes in when I do the photo shoot. And when I'm not doing the photo shoot, they're just little holes in the back. No problemo. Magic Penguin says, are you gifting this piece to Demon Hunter as well or keeping for yourself? This is just a piece for myself. I've already gifted Demon Hunter like three sculptures at this point. They don't need more. I need more. always learn that right after I screw it down of course but I did make the innovation of actually making it possible to pop the back on and off which uh, was not the case last time
second seal because uh, it may not be necessary
Garbage. I forgot to be careful about how I was placing this. Looks like it broke off a leg or something down there. Lights looking a little better for it. Show up. Here's the big reveal. Okay, not bad. Not what I was hoping for. Mr. Spider Hole is a little too intense. <laughs> Do 
too much, guys. Too much. I'm not getting anything through this hole. Seems like some minor tweaks will get me there. Still smoking. This thing just uh, detaches on and off really nicely, so A plus. Uh, okay, so the horn that was not being super responsive was this guy, which is this hole. So maybe I'll try one of these earlier ones that I that I covered up. check let me make sure all three of the ends were still blowing right yeah pretty equally Hi, 76. Okay, where Spider-Man is here. Okay, so that explains why so much is coming out of the spider, because it's a bunch of it is routing down this hole. So I'm going to just kind of build up a little wall hot glue there. Okay, for some smoke to come out of it, but I want more coming out of the holes around the face.
I think this hole just needs to be moved down a bit. Alright, test number two. Oh, not yet. Gotta catch these.
going anywhere? Okay. Okay, I think the one tweak I want to make is there's just too much just like shooting straight out right there. I'm not getting as much kind of oozing down the face as I was hoping. I don't want it shooting out like a volcano. I want it like, it's supposed to be sick, not violent. rings okay so how can I diffuse that I could just put like a like a piece of foam or cotton or mesh maybe Or I could just do a lower hole. I think that's the safer bet. I'm just going to do a lower hole.
I think we're gonna be good this time, guys. No ring again. Oh well. It's not like it's the space shuttle. Hopefully, final grand unveiling of this wondrous effect. Much better. I think there's some ceiling that needs to be done on the back, but I'll do that later. Yeah, okay. Okay guys, we're done. I'm tired, I'm hungry, but I did it. I did a thing. The thing is done. <sighs> All I had to do was learn to vape. <clears throat> I need to figure out how to turn it down. It's kind of burny. Okay, uh, see you guys later. Thanks for hanging out with me. And we'll see you guys on Wednesday as usual. Toodley doodley. Bye.